Steve Carr here with my old friend Mitch Easter, one of Car Amp's first celebrity customers 14 years ago, and uh, here at, uh, at his studio. And we're going to do a little recording, uh, talk about mic placement, a little bit of, maybe about guitars, I'm not sure if we'll get to that, and amps in general. Mitch has been very kind to agree. Well, it'll be a pleasure for me because um, at any moment I'm ready to talk about amps. Mm. I really am. I love amps. You do love amps I do. and guitars, and we'll uh, we'll get some shots of around the studio. It's super exciting here in Kernersville. We've got snow flurries outside, which is super unusual. So this is a, a great day. Yeah, there's always something going on here. When I knew these guys were coming, I said, "Let's get some snow in." You know. So, oh. you know. <laughs> All right. So we've got a Mercury here, which is maybe the studio amp in my opinion, because it will do anything. It really will. And uh, as as uh, fans of car amps uh, who visit the website often as I do may know, it has a variable um, power output that you can go from 8 watts down to a tenth of a watt. And all the tones in between are great and the same. Somehow the attenuator doesn't really make it sound any different. And when I recorded the Mercury, I somehow wound up on 2 watts a lot. And I don't think it was for any reason other than that's just like a great volume, you know. It's enough power to feel like you're doing something, but you can like talk and not get all stressed out from being obliterated by guitars, you know. You can get your totally amp-derived tone out of this thing so quickly and easily. And I, I just always think that like the sounds that feel like they're not going through a million gain stages are the sounds that are the ones that really have life in the end. And when you record stuff, you know, you've got your guitar and your amp, but then you've got microphones and compressors and the recording device and what you do in mixing. You keep messing with the sound. And that, so I think it's really important to have the guitar sound coming out of the amp be sort of fresh and un, unfettered or I don't know, there's got to be a better verb than that but unfettered will have to do. Anyway, the Mercury uh, is the kind of amp that you can't go wrong with is my point. It has a great reverb in it too but like you know a starting point set, set up for me would be like this. I an SM7 dynamic microphone just pointed right at the speaker often right in the middle because that's where Les Paul said you should put it. He really did. And um, and you know, a lot of people will put the speaker, uh, I mean, put the mic off center a little bit, which makes it a little less bright. Um, I think some people think you can't do this, like that this is illegal, but it's not illegal. It'll, it'll, I haven't been busted for it, and it does sound good. And then a secondary microphone is great because if you have two microphones, they can't obviously be in the exact same spot. So there's going to be some delay, you know, between the two microphones, which is going to produce a phase error between the two microphones. And the phase error can be your enemy or your friend, you know, and you make it your friend by just moving the mics around until it sounds good. Although in your computer, you can do this after the fact, but we won't talk about that. The best way to do it is to just move them around until you get a good sound, you know. But what I like to do as a, this is like a simple setup, but this is like going to be okay every time, really. Um, this other microphone is an Omni which means in a lot of ways it's less critical because it's picking up all around. You know, the, the actual relationship to this microphone is in some ways not as critical. I mean, it is, but anyway. The, the Omni thing is just cool because if you use uh, more and more of that, you get more and more of the space around the amp. And a little touch of that can, can be really nice. And this is an Electro Voice 635, which exists today in a form called the 635A that looks different, but it's basically the same thing. This is a microphone that just always sounds great on electric guitars. It has kind of a limited bandwidth. It only goes up to about 13 kilohertz, but that's really high, you know. Um, but it's just good sounding, and these two add up really nicely. And um, mainly, if when you get a good phase relationship between two mics, you can get a, a bass that you can't get with EQ. You can get a really solid bottom end that's not like woofy or anything, but just, just like a true foundation. Just a, and, and the one mic thing will, will never quite get that. But then again, you got to think about typically a guitar is in a track with a lot of other stuff. So it, sometimes it can't be totally huge. It has to be sort of in its place. But you do get a really nice bottom end with two mics if you get them in the right position. So this is a simple starting point. And, uh, you know, you could probably get an equally good sound back about a foot. Uh, I think that sort of sounds about the same. Once you get more than that, it starts to actually sound distant. And I think for most of what I do, you know, the kind of close-up sound is what we what we want. So anyway, these are a couple of my favorites, but I don't always use these. Um, I don't know if you can move that camera, but this thing on the boom here, this is a microphone that I might use on that amp too. If you have one of these, um, you will you will love it. This is the Coles 4038, 
formerly the STC 4038, which is a, a BBC spec ribbon microphone that they still make and is crazy looking, weighs a ton, and has a magnet that will pull you across the room if you're wearing a big belt. Um, but these microphones just have a big and bodacious sound. So this would be something else I might put on, on the Mercury, probably just all by itself because it's so mega it doesn't need any help. And you know, ribbon microphones are always figure eights. So like this is picking up from here and from here and it's sort of dead on the side. So you're always gonna get some of the room with this thing, um, which can be part of its, of it, of its uh, interesting sound. But then you gotta think about the fact that the side that's close to the speaker is so close to the speaker that that's gonna really dominate what you hear. The stuff from the back of the room is you know, not as much, just simply because it's so loud on this side. However, if you record these things with a bit of compression, that brings up the low-level stuff. So a little compression will sometimes bring up the room noise around the guitar, and that can be a good thing. Usually I record guitars without any compression, but when you mix, sometimes you add some compression, and you find you have some ambience you didn't know you had. And if you want a little bit of ambience, ribbons are, are cool for that kind of thing. But I would say for an ampli size of the Mercury, these two dynamics or this might, would be my first choices for the way to record it. Uh, well, Mitch, I know you've tried a lot of different settings on the Merc. This is one of the ones that I like, uh, which people may not find by themselves. It's setting it in the um, non-boost mode, the lowest boost mode, turning off the treble, all the way off on the treble, all the way off on the bass, and the volume all the way up. And it's kind of just a thick, perhaps a little bit of a fendery overdrive. Yeah, I think it would never occur to me to turn the tone controls all the way down. It sounds magnificent. <laughs> got a great focus. You know, it reminds me a little bit of when you roll the wah wah pedal back a little bit, and you've got this sort of resonant sound. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> setting uh, I found that works for me is to take the treble and the bass and kind of point them at each other. So if you imagine they're straight up and you bring them in like this, so the treble is going up, bass is coming down, and reverb up, that's a nice kind of uh, pretty atmospheric sound, again on that lowest boost mode, if you would. Sounds a bit like this. plenty of life in that, mm. that treble setting is perfect. Yeah, new strings are actually not quite as good as slightly used strings. Yeah, bringing up the treble and the bass down a little bit seems, you know, everything's interactive in the tone stack, so it, it really sounds like it scoops the mid more when you do that, to me at least. Yeah. We're about to hear a really great uh, way to set a Mercury if you want overdrive and a really rocking, maybe, I don't know, Ronson-esque sound and I do this live myself I've got an old echoplex that multiplies my guitar signal by about three times before hitting the amp and then using the middle boost position in volume at about noon Mitch is going to do this with his uh, Watkins copycat tape echo and uh, yeah we'll, we'll hear how it how it goes all right so this is a lot of echo and a lot of output from this thing but you can hear it does a good tone thing in addition to this very exciting and weird sounding echo See, that's amazing, right? The decay is so weird. It's so weird. Cool. That's really useful too. And, and you don't need a 
big studio to yeah. get this kind of sound. You could do it at home in your bedroom. That's Down right. on the one tenth of a watt set. Check it out. Oh yeah. But it feels great when you're playing at that tenth of a watt. You still get the that kind of uh, interactive, delicious vibe. Well, here we have the Mercury and uh, Jazzmaster, which has you know drastically less output than the uh, the not a Les Paul that we were playing before. <laughs> Sounds like this. A lot of that, as they say, spanky stuff going on. That's just great. <laughs> good on this uh, neck pickup kind of lead stuff, I think. This console sounds particularly good on electric guitars. The first thing that I heard out of it when we installed it that made me realize that this thing was really a good piece of equipment was an electric guitar. You know, it seems like electric guitars would be very easy to deal with, right? Mm. But for me, maybe it's because I'm a guitar player, but they are very revealing of any problems you've got. And, you know, if you've got crackles or something like oh, that, yeah. the guitars will bring them out like nothing else. <clears throat> and with this thing, you know, we pushed up the fader on a microphone on the electric electric guitar and, and it was like, oh, that's nice. And I was so happy about that because often we would, you know, we'd get the sound in, then we'd realize we have to EQ it some, we gotta compress it, we gotta mess with it, you know, to get it to sound, you know, fabulous enough to be worthy of a top recording, which is the only kind we do here. Sure. Top recordings. Somehow with this console, this the raw sound of the mic preamp through the fader is the deal. So, you know, I mean, I'm still using multiple microphones a lot of times, but very rarely now am I EQing. Um, and if we do EQ, a lot of times it's just to roll off the super top end that maybe we just sort of don't need. You know? mm. uh, and that's this particular board. It's this Previous particular boards, console. So you might mess with it a bit more. Yes, yeah, so the console I had before this was a Neve VR, which is a big fancy console, but it didn't sound as good as this one. It wow. just did to me. Um, and I was much more prone to EQing on the way in with, with, with that console than with this one. And this one actually mixed the soundtrack for Das Boot. That's true, it with. did. So it was broken in. It was properly. broken in, well <laughs> broken in. Another uh, favorite of, of millions that was done on this console was the never-ending story. Huh. Um, because that guy, the, it was built for a guy named Klaus Doldinger, and he wrote, did the scores for those. And he, he's also a jazz guy. So uh, he had a oh, thing right. called Passport Studio, I think. That's where this was installed originally. So he made these sort of fusion records on it. You know. Well, maybe we could uh, hear something that you've recorded, uh, yes. some Mercury sounds. And this is a, a tune of yours. Yes, this is uh, a demo that I did that I haven't ever finished. <laughs>
Steve Carr here for Car Amps, and Mitch, of course, thanks for having us out and showing us some of your miking tricks. It's a great pleasure to have you here, as always. Oh, man. Uh, and if we, we need more miking tricks, <laughs> until next time. I have some that I haven't <laughs> revealed yet. That's right. Well, so, until next, oh, well, please. Yeah, no, well, yeah, this is, I'm just really stepping all over you. Oh, no, it's all right. Well, well when I take delivery of my next car amp, maybe we can try some secret mic. Yeah, we'll do that, and uh, yeah, well, this will be a multi-installment uh, video for the people, and you can write to us and ask if you see anything curious here, you have questions from Mitch, <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time... Mm -hmm.